Hi, my name is Victor Dwyer, and today I'm going to show you how to connect WooCommerce data to Google Data Studio and Google Sheets, so that way you can actually see your data in a very actionable way. And today I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's get started. Okay, so we today we are going to use Power My Analytics to connect that data into Google Sheets and Google Data Studio. So you can use a free trial, you can connect them, they're very easy to use, and that way you can just have a simple connection between WooCommerce and Google Data Studio and Google Sheets. So this is what we're gonna to use today, connect to them. So once you set up your free account, you'll be able to add a data source, and you'll be able to navigate that by going to Sources, New Data Source, and then going to WooCommerce. And this, some of this navigation will change, but most of it will be the same. It's the same type of principle here. So with that in mind, uh, once you go here to add account, what you're going to do is you're going to navigate to your actual WordPress site. So right now I'm in my WordPress site. You're gonna go over to WooCommerce. And once you navigate to WooCommerce, you're going to go to settings. And after you go to settings, you're going to go to advanced. And after you go to advanced, you're gonna go to rest API. And then you're gonna add a key. For the description, I'm just gonna put PMA for Power My Analytics. Okay, so once the API keys are generated, we're gonna go and copy one of these, go back over to the consumer key, copy that in, and then we're gonna to go to the consumer secret and paste that one in, and then the actual site address of everything here, which will be yourdwire.com. And then we're going to press connect. Okay, so once it has been connected, what we're going to do is we're going to actually press Google Data Studio right here. Okay, and once you click through there, we're going to scroll down to the bottom where it goes to WooCommerce. We're going to click it, and it's going to open up Google Data Studio here. And we're going to name this data source. We're going to call it WooCommerce Test. And you can, you can call this whatever you want. And once this is named, we're going to go to authorize and a pop-up is going to happen and we're going to authorize, just authorize it. And we're just going to open up and close it essentially. And once we click here, we're going to select the hub, press next, the user account, victordwire.com, press next. And then from there, um, I'm not going to actually select anything here because this is going to be dependent on how you process your data. So let's say if someone comes up to you and you only want to see completed orders and none of it being pending in your data set, then you can select this. I'm not going to select anything here because I always want to show all the data every single time, but that is completely up to you on how you want to present your data. Okay, from there, I'm going to press connect. Okay, so now that the data is up there, I'm going to go to Google Data Studio. I'm going to do that by clicking this little icon right here. And then from there, I'm going to go to reports and Power My Analytics actually gives us a really neat template to work off of. And we're going to use that today. So I'm going to click on WooCommerce dashboard. And then from there, I'm going to go in the top right and I'm going to press make a copy. And I'm going to use that WooCommerce test source. And I'm actually going to rename this dashboard uh, WooCommerce test dashboard. Okay, now we're going to navigate to another test source that is going to actually have data populated in here. So we're going to use that. Okay, so right now, this dashboard, there's a little bit too many numbers going on to really understand. If you like to see all your stuff in one place, this can be a good chart, but the brain can only utilize so many of the same chart and understand everything that's going on. And there's a little bit too much going on here. So I'm going to show you how to make this dashboard a little bit more actionable for you. So it actually starts out with, I'm going to delete some of this data points to make it a little bit less overwhelming. So starting out, I'm going to have less data um, total tax. I don't need that information. I don't find that that's not important for me. Um, order tax, that's not important to me. I would say returns. These these aren't these aren't important to me. 
Um, I would say returns maybe. That might give me some some things to work off of. And after that, order order value, seeing that all this else is pretty relevant for me except these. So I'm going to keep these top four here because that's going to be relevant. Okay, perfect. And I'm going to actually at the bottom here, and I will give out this dashboard here to uh, work off of so that we can work off my final input of the dashboard. So from there, I'm going to go to page settings, current page settings right here. And I'm going to go to style. And I'm going to make the height of this actually about 3000. Okay, so from there, from there, I'm going to actually go to charts. So once I utilize this page, I'm able to see, okay, is this chart actionable? Are you, are we going to be able to see, okay, how many sales on any particular day is doing better than it was before? So that way we can go, okay, on February 22nd, we got a spike of sales. What did we do in order to make that happen? And now that this chart becomes actionable for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to click it and I'm going to press control C on it. I'm going to go back to the previous page, the first page, and I'm going to make, I'm going to press control V paste it in. And now I have my sales by day. So that way it's a little bit more actionable. So that way, rather than having all of one type of chart next to each other, we have a little bit different types of format. So that way the eye becomes more attracted to it. And then from there, I'm going to look at leaderboard, look at this, this page. So I'm going to do, I'm going to keep the top products because I actually find this is going to be interesting to me to see what products are doing the best for us. So this is very actionable for me. And then I'm going to do that same control V control C thing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this over I'm going to make this wide. I'm going to do that. You can see how you, there's two different types of charts here. So that way it's a little bit more actionable. Let's look at customers. This chart is not as actionable for us. Orders, that's not very valuable to me. Order by state, that, see that, this is interesting to me. So that way we can see, okay, what states, it looks like Florida and Texas are just like loving this product, the uh, these products. So that that's pretty actionable and that's, that's fascinating to me as a marketer. So I'm definitely gonna utilize this and bring this chart in because I find that fascinating. And then stock, stock is very important to bring in. So I'm actually gonna bring in this inventory stock here and um, so that way we always know how much stock we have. So that way we can um, fulfill it if we are ever low on anything. So I'm going to press control C, control V. I'm going to paste this in. I'm going to drag it down. Okay, so now we have the inventory report here. I might remove these images because the images may not be valuable here. So I might end up removing those because it might take up space, but it might be valuable for you guys. And then after that, that's basically it. So what I'm going to actually do here is I'm going to combine, I'm going to actually bring this back down and I'm going to put this order by state over here. Okay. And I'm going to make this the same size. So that way it's a little bit more, um, a little bit more fluid boom and now you have an overview dashboard of everything that's going on so that way you can know the total sales the average order value seeing what particular day does the best what products are doing well what and what state is doing the highest and the inventory all in one place and you we will give you this dashboard that you can utilize but i want to show this because every dashboard is going to be unique to their own business so this is how i would set it up for google data studio Okay, so now moving over to Google Sheets. So we have this brand new Google Sheet here, and I'm gonna call this WooCommerce Test 2. And then from here, I'm going to go to Extensions, and you have to install, you're gonna to go to Add-ons and get Add-ons, and then you're going to install the Power My Analytics extension, and then sign in and go in from there. And then once you're able to do that, you're going to go to Power My Analytics, log in. It's gonna do its own thing. And it's going to go successful. Perfect. And now I'm going to refresh this page. 
And from there, I'm going to go back to extensions, go to add-ons, power my analytics, show sidebar. Power my analytics has one of the best Google sheet integrations that you, that are out there right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press add, add report, and then I'm going to navigate over to WooCommerce, select it. And I'm going to select the right account. And then here, like we don't, I don't have to use the order status here. So this isn't important to me. So I'm not going to utilize that. And then I'm going to do last 30 days. And you can select any date range you want there. Okay. So, so from there, basically what most people are going to want the date, the product title, the gross sales and average order value. So that way you can know how many sales you have for per product per day. So I'm going to set those, make sure you press set conditions. And so I'm not going to use that. I'm going to order this by date. I'm going to just do, um, I'll do 10,000 for now. I'm going to remove the show report header. I don't need that information. And then you can name it if you like. I'm not going to name it in this case. And I'm going to press create report. Okay. So from here, I'm going to, I'm going to select this column and I'm going to format it as a date. And the reason why is I'm going to actually make a pivot table off this data here. So now from here, you'll be able to see, okay, what the date is, what sales, what products and what the sales were and the average order value for that particular day for that particular product. And the best way to use this data, I'm actually going to head over to insert and I'm going to go to pivot table. And I'm going to select all this. I'm going to press create. And then from there, I'm going to exit out of this. I'm going to click on this again. And then for the row, I'm going to put date for the value. I'm going to put, okay. So into the row, I'm going to put product title just like that. And then for values, I'm going to put gross sales. And then I'm going to put average order value and under average order value, I'm going to put average just like that. Okay. So from there I can actually right click this data and I can create a pivot table date, meaning that I can figure out what particular day does the best. So for example, I can organize this by day of the week and see what particular products do better on any particular days. And what I can even do another way to organize this is I can actually take out the product level information and I can see what day of the week is actually doing better for us. So for example, Monday and Saturday are our top product, our top days that we have right now. So we need to, or actually Thursday, Monday and Thursday look like to be the best days of the week for us. So maybe it's worth advertising more on those days. So that might be very actionable for you. And you can really play around with this data here. So rather than you, can, you rather than day of the week, you can use it by quarter, by month, by year, and be able to really break this down. And that way you can really have some actual data for you and your business is how I typically interpret this and utilize this data here. Another way a lot of people will utilize this data is you can actually see the last orders and get pull in the order IDs. So you can actually pull in all the customer info you want by um, by first name, last name, and basically all the customer information that you can automatically import to the sheet. Some people find that valuable to integrate. So that way you can do make custom audiences out of it or anything else. So that would be valuable to you. And you're able to pull it almost in the same way and automatically import that into the sheet. And once, once you have all the reports you want, you can schedule a refresh and you can do it on a daily basis where you can schedule it on a certain time of the day where you can have this automatically refreshed. So that way you never have to automatically import data again. So that's, that's basically it guys. Um, that's the overview of how to integrate WooCommerce data into Google data studio and how to integrate into Google sheets. Let me know if you have any questions, we will put the template of the Google data studio within the description below. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks guys.